Okay, we are interviewing Nicole Gomez and she is running for election as state representative. Uh, Nicole, feel free to give us an introduction. You have two minutes. Sounds great. Thank you, Ethan. And hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Nicole Gomez. I am a mom, an advocate, and a community leader. And I'm running to be your next state representative here in the place that I'm proud to call my home. Um, it's where I've chosen to raise my family and where I've committed to building a strong community, the 36th Legislative District. Um, at age five, I went from living in a secure house and lifestyle to quickly losing my home simply due to the illness of a parent. And from that moment, I grew up really fast. I had to learn how the world works, how it doesn't, and I had to learn how to navigate complex systems in order to really survive. Um, people like me don't run for office very often, and it's because we're tired. Unfortunately, uh, my story is not a rare one. Thousands of Washingtonians face these dilemmas on a daily basis, and it's against all odds that I'm here today. But a lifetime of experience has brought me to this moment and I'm ready to use what I've learned to benefit all of us because I know that you're tired too. Um, we need an economy that works for all of us. We need to make the government work for us and we all deserve a fair shot. Every single one of us needs security in where we live, work, seek care, live, I mean, learn and play. And we all need to know that if we lose our jobs, we can still go to the doctor and get our medications. That if we're sick, um, we can, uh, or decide to grow our family, we still have a job to come back to. Um, that our rent isn't going to jump by $500 when our income remains the same. And that if we start a small business, we can afford to keep our doors open um, if, and still be able to pay the taxes. Um, and that we're continually working towards immediate climate justice so that our kids and grandkids can thrive. I look forward to answering your questions today. And uh, thank you for having me. Thank you, Nicole. Appreciate that. Um, so we are going to, we have four prepared questions. You will be able to see those in the chat, um, but we'll, we'll read them to you too. Uh, Sarah, do you want to take question number one? Sure. You can probably see it in the chat. What tax reforms do you think are realistic in the next legislative session and what would be your strategy for implementing them? What do you feel is the ideal tax structure for Washington state in the long term? Boy, well, you're talking right up my alley here. Um, so I've been working with the Balance Our Tax Code Coalition for the past couple of years um, now because of my nonprofit organization. So um, when we work on healthcare policy, we realize that our tax structure is completely broken. And so um, in the near future, what I would like to see move through would be something like the guaranteed basic income bill that Representative Barry uh, proposed last session that didn't quite make it through, but I'm hoping that we can gear up to have that move forward. It's just one of the tools in the toolbox of a variety of things, right? Uh, we passed capital gains and um, and that's under, under review right now by the courts. Um, and there's also an initiative out there uh, that is hoping to strike it down. Um, but uh, something that I think is uh, really important and that I would like to work on is more of a, a whole systems reform of our tax structure. Um, that includes taxing the wealthy. It includes um, taking a look at uh, and the way we uh, have our um, income, like our, our system set up, I would love to see an income tax, um, quite frankly. And I, you know, it's not something, it's a, something that the legislature can vote for, but we also need to have people behind it. And so there needs to be a statewide campaign um, in order for that to happen, because if it does pass the legislature, then it would need to go to a ballot, right? And so those are the type, types of things that I would like to see in the immediate future, closing the tax loopholes that are out there, um, you know, it's just a, it's a messed up system and we need to fix it. Great. Thank you. Uh, second question, uh, Sherry, do you want to take this one? Okay. Um, given, uh, okay, I can read. Given failing, given failing enrollment over the past two years, our school districts are facing a new funding crisis on top of the bare minimum funding levels in place before the pandemic. What will you do to ensure that our schools are fully funded? Right, that brings us back to the similar question as before. I mean, it really does come down to what we're able to do with our tax structure. Um, uh, it's frustrating um, as you start to go through a lot of these policy ideas um, that are being proposed. Some of them are, are really great. I would um, 
but with our with the way our our funding structure i mean there's there's not a lot of funds out there right now uh in in order to really be able to tackle the problems in a real way um and it and it touches on school funding as well um you know i've been looking at at the different um the different ways to to write our our tax code right and and really quite frankly we need to make sure that the wealthy are paying our fair their fair share i mean right now we have the lowest um income and middle income individuals you know paying as much as 17 percent of their income in taxes and i think that uh while the while the wealthy few pay you know upwards of three percent and it's just not right um and so with the structure with the restructuring of what we're currently doing um it would make sense then to to pull in uh funding uh in in that way for schools for healthcare, for um well, pretty much everything that we, we, we've been putting off for so long. If that makes sense. <laughs> Oop, you're on mute. Thank you for that. Um, and I believe, Barbara, is that you? Yes. I'm gonna, I, rename, I'm gonna rename you. Thank you, um, Ethan. No problem at all. Um, let's see, we, so our third prepared question, um, Consuelo, do you wanna answer that or ask that? I really need to get a better mouse. Sorry, my mouse is terrible. It's like it takes five minutes to catch up to me. Okay, so the third question. How have you worked to reduce climate change and specifically, how would you take ambitious steps to address the largest drivers of climate change greenhouse gas emissions? Sorry, I'm just reading it again. So with with working to reduce climate change, you know, those are things that you can take individually on a, on a daily basis, right? Um, I haven't worked on any specific legislation um, with regard to climate change, but, but something that we have been doing is supporting climate bills, right? So our... Um, my my organization um, as part of our legislative agenda because it's because it's an organization that focuses on healthcare. We also um, consider environmental policy to be part of our agenda. Um, we don't we don't handle as many of those bills, but something that we were looking at were um, where it was the Hill the Heal Act. Um, it's something that we worked on in order to kind of get the ball rolling on some of our, our climate goals as a state. Um, and, and so with the HEAL Act, one of the, one of the things that I really love about it is that you're actually able to, um, the, the way it's set up is that it has the, uh, there, I think there's six or seven different agencies, um, state agencies that have hired an employee to actually go into the communities um, around the state uh, that are deeply impacted by the effects of climate change um, and, and actually have kind of a bottom up approach to, to policy making and recommendations. And so, um, the recommendations that are going to be coming out of, of those conversations are going to be quite uh, amazing, I think. Um, that they, they are planning to, uh, to elevate some of those uh, communities and, and the issues that surround them um, based on their, their health uh, uh, map. There's like a, there's a health disparities map. And so, yeah. I can talk more about that later. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. I, I hate cutting you off. I, it's okay. I'm trying to keep it on track. Um, question number four. Um, let's see. Uh, Clayton, do you want to take that one? Sure. <clears throat> in addition to the climate crisis, King County has been in a homeless state, a state of emergency since 2015, uh, at least, I would say. Uh, 
and our entire state is facing a housing crisis. Do you agree that we need to add additional housing? And what will you do to ensure that all cities in our region are building the housing we need? I absolutely agree that we need more housing. Um, so, do we... Well, I mean, one of the things that you can do at the state level with regard to, to ensuring that cities in our region are able to build the housing, the houses or housing that we need um, is that, you know, there's quite a few different ways, right? It's again, it's multiple efforts. Um, one could be that you could put an end to exclusionary zoning laws. Um, you know, the way specifically here in, in Seattle, um, we have restrictions on where we can build and how much and how high um, our, our buildings can be. Um, so then that, that actually does uh, put us in a bit of a pickle uh, <laughs> with regard to where we're gonna be able to build, right? Um, and so uh, that is one area that the state can, can, can take on. Um, there also was a, a, a middle housing bill um, that could set like a statewide baseline for allowing uh, the infill of, um, allow, allowing for infill of homes. And so that is something that didn't pass last session, but I think with some tweaks that we'll be able to move a little bit better um, in this upcoming session, I hope. Um, because we absolutely need more housing. Um, there's also other things that we can do, right? Uh, because what's happening is that the trades um, need more employees to even build this housing in the first place, all of our infrastructure. And so we can also make sure that we have the training programs at community colleges, possibly even high schools in order to build in those workers. Um, there are tons of other uh, little things that you can do while considering this, but um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're going to open it up to questions from the eboard. Um, does anybody from the eboard have a question? And again, Nicole, you got one minute to answer these. Okay. Yeah, Sarah. Hey, Nicole. Uh, as you know, we have significant transportation challenges in the 36 aging infrastructure, including our bridges and a lack of access to public transit in our region, particularly for those most vulnerable. What would you do in the legislature to better address the transportation challenges and ensure access to public transit for all? That's a good question. Um, you know, I know that we've been working on the bridge projects for, or, or we've been hoping to get funding for the bridge projects for a long time. And so uh, that is definitely an area that I would like to see uh, move forward. Uh, you know, there's, there are a lot of logistical challenges with that. Um, one of the problems that I've seen uh, just being in Olympia, it, you know, well, this was a couple of years ago when we were there in person, but uh, some of the problems were that there are so many projects that need to be completed and, and, and funded across this whole entire state. And so uh, I've, uh, I've heard rumblings and grumblings from, from, from legislators that don't live in the Seattle area. They think that we're very privileged <laughs> um, here in Seattle, which we are. Um, but you know, if our bridges go out, then we would be in a terrible situation. And so I would, I would push for, for funding there. Um, and I forgot. Yeah, I forgot the second part of the question. Um, access, um, transportation access. Yeah, so so one of the things I would like to, to work with or to see uh, done one is minute. to consider about more funding for actually public access uh, to, to, to free transit, um, because I think that that would really help in a variety of different ways, including getting people to their doctor's appointments. So I'll stop. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, uh, Clayton. Um. <laughs> Uh, Nicole, uh, I have a question about, about um, homelessness and housing, mm -hmm. um, because it seems as though, you know, when we drive around town, what we see is new housing that is a product of our private enterprise system. 
which means that it is a product of the contractors becoming increasingly wealthy. So um, my question is uh, regards the Seattle Housing Authority and whether it's a product of federal or, or state legislation and how it could be changed so that the Seattle Housing Authority could build uh, not just housing for the uh, elderly like me, uh, but also housing for the indigent. Okay. Pretending that I'm not indigent, but anyway. That's, a, that's actually a good question um, that I, I mean, when, when I'm thinking about, you know, the ways that we could potentially increase houses and move them away from the large developers, you know, um, one of the things that kind of pops into my head is that, you know, there needs to be a way to, 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 to fund, I mean, like, quite frankly, it's, I mean, if we can, if we can fund the, the building of homes for people that need them, um, and, and quite, and, and, you know, when you're thinking about it, sorry, this is a hard one, because it's, it's so complicated, and to get it into a minute, it's, it's <laughs> no, no, like, that's one minute, that's one like, minute right there, um, I know, but Nicole, we got, <laughs> It's okay. We we've got time for a one gotcha. minute closing. If you want to, if you, uh, Sarah, you have your hand up. If you wanted to, uh, Sarah, you go ahead. No, if we're at time, then go ahead with a one minute closing. Are we? At yeah. Time? It, so Nicole, if you want to get into that with your one minute closing, you have one minute to wrap things up. Oh gosh. Well, you mean you guys ask such great questions, and you know this is the first time I've been on this side of the camera, I guess if you want to call it that. So thank you so much for meeting with me. Um, like I said, do I have all the answers? No, right. But anybody who says they do is not being very truthful. Um, but this is something that that uh, you know, if you're able, like the, I've already done a lot of work in the legislature with my nonprofit, with legislators passing bills, moving towards like increased access to healthcare, sitting on the state commission. I've proven I do have the tenacity, the vision, and the ability to seek out experts, and that's really important in this job. Um, and I also have the negotiation skills to get things done. Right, people uh, there in Olympia like me, they respect me, and they know that I'm going to be straight with them. Um, and if I don't know the answer, I will find it out. Um, you know, with me, the Washington would get a thoughtful and humble servant with an innate curiosity uh, um, about why we do the things we do and with the proven drive um, to change something if it's no longer serving us. And so that's, that's why I'm running, that's why I'm here. And I really would appreciate your support, thank you. Okay, thank you, Nicole. Great, great chatting with you. I'm going to take us off the recording. Great, thank you.